Hi guys and welcome back to NoteFlow. Today I'll present you an exciting new series where we'll explore the fascinating world of height fields. Together we'll break down exactly what a height field is and take a deep dive into every single node Houdini offers for height field manipulation. So having started my career specializing in environments, I love this subject and can't wait to share it with you. So without further ado, let's jump right in. <music> In Udini, I want to start by creating a geo node and go inside. Here, I will create an HF node. It's just a short way to refer to height field nodes. And I will drop it. Over here, you can see something that looks like a plane, although it's not really a plane. If I press W to visualize the wireframe, we don't have any geometry because this is technically a 2D volume. And you can check it over here. So you see it's made of voxels. And over here, you have information only on two axes out of three. The reason why we use height fields is because they allow for better manipulations of noises and they are easier to compute. They're a plane with lots of geometry. The most important properties of this node are the size, of course, you can change it over here. If you don't see this gizmo, you have to go into the viewport and press enter and you will be able to change the size manually. And then you have a uniform scale. It will scale uniformly on both the axes. And then I also want to talk about the grid spacing. To better visualize what the grid spacing is doing, I will to create a height field noise and I will just connect the first input to the output of the height field and visualize it. If you go now and select your height field, changing the grid spacing will actually influence the resolution, making it higher. You see, you don't have enough resolution for the noise to be displayed. Making it lower, you will increase the resolution of your height field. The classic workflow is usually to play on a higher value, something like the will work. And then later we can always go back and increase the resolution so we can work faster and more efficiently. So let's explore the head field noise. As you can see, you have different parameters. You have the all the parameters relative to a noise, like the amplitude and the element size. And for now, I want to focus on the noise type. And I think one of the most important ones to master is the purling, as you can make very beautiful environments just by mastering the purling by itself. And I want to play a little bit with these values until I have something more interesting. In the post-processing, I want you to focus for a moment on the complement. So the complement is basically like an inverse. You see, now we have this one, and then on the bottom, you have this pattern. Maybe you're interested more in the bottom part. So you can reverse this height field by clicking on complement. So maybe, you know, it can be useful in some cases. In the clipping over here, you can basically clip it from the top if you want to achieve a result that looks like that. Or you can clip it from the bottom. So it's a very straightforward way of making something look like it's actually in water. I will slide it back to zero. And then I will explore the distortion. You can enable the lattice warp. And as the name says, you can actually distort your terrain based on a frequency. And it should be pretty straightforward. One of the most important parameters over here is actually the gradient work. I really think you can achieve something that looks quite interesting with this one. So I will disable the lattice work to make it everything clear and then enable in the gradient work and the accumulate gradient work. You see, if I increase this one, my mountains will tend to get bulgier. Maybe this is the look you're looking for or ideally I tend to use it going to the negatives because you see if you go into the negatives, you have sharper peaks. Even if you're making something abstract, I think this pattern looks quite interesting or maybe stylized. If you just lower it a little bit, the mountains will look like if they are in a higher altitude, you know, with all the winds carving them in this particular fashion. For now, I will disable this one too and I will create a new node called Heightfield Distort by Noise. Again, I will connect the first input and I will visualize. This node is the second most important, I would say, for high field manipulations is not really adding a noise on top of all of this, it's just using this noise to displace the position of the pre existing one. So now we are having a curl noise, we can change the amplitude and maybe the element size should be bigger. So as you can see, we are not adding an extra layer of noise off top, we are just distorting the pre existing one. And again, the, you have the same controls that you have with any kind of noise. So if you want something to look a little bit more rocky, you can increase the roughness. You could change the noise type to simplex, maybe having different results. And then I want to show you the height field clip. You should remember we play with the clip into the height field noise. But what the height field clip allows you is also to make a better blend between the clip parts and the parts that will not be clipped. So if you change the soft clip scale, this is the result that we had before in the height field noise. But here you have a soft clip scale. This is very useful if you want to actually lower some parts without making them look too weird. So I will exaggerate the noise over here, changing the amplitude so the effect will be more visible. So now you have something that looks more interesting and more diverse. Although you see our height field is now red and no matter what we create later, like a height field noise and connect it, you will still see your terrain red. So what you're seeing or here in red is the mask layer. Since the start, we had two different layers, the height that will store all the deformation that we're making. And then you have a mask layer that will store a mask for you that you can use to isolate certain effects. And you can plug a mask into these second inputs over here. So for 
now what I want to use is in height field mask clear. So as the name implies, this will just delete your mask. And so now you have something that looks a little bit more like that. So we saw what is a night field. We saw how to manipulate noises and distort using a noise. And then as an extra, I introduced the height field clip because I wanted to talk a little bit about the masking that this node gives us by default and how to delete a mask. Now masking is an art by itself and that's, that will be the topic of the next video. So thank you for joining me today. I hope you learned something new. If you did, please subscribe and leave a like as that will help a lot the channel to grow. Thank you for staying until the end and I will see you in the next one. Thanks.